These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. So the other ray goes into the middle. Here's the incoming ray. Now, if this was a lens, it would just go straight through without, without bending. Well, the similar thing for a mirror is to go out at the same angle it came in. So if I was a good drawer, this outward angle would be the same as this inward angle over here. And this is what we might call the M-ray, remember? The M-ray because it's going to the middle. One thing to remind you of, maybe we talked about this, a common mistake is to think that all the rays go to the focal point. Well, no, the P-ray goes to the focal point, but the M-ray has nothing to do with the focal point. All right, one thing you can already see that seems to be a difficulty here is there's no reason to think these are going to be parallel to each other. There's no reason to think these lines will be parallel. So how the heck are we going to get all the rays being parallel like they want in the problem? Well, let's press on and we'll see how to do that. All right, so far this is just review. Now we talked about that when you're doing ray tracing, these are the only two rays, you only need two rays. Because remember the whole purpose of ray tracing is to find the image. And the image is where the outgoing light rays converge. But once you have two rays, you can see where the outgoing light rays converge. Um, however, however, um, obviously there's not only two rays going through this point. There's an infinite number of rays. Here's a ray, here's a ray, here's a ray, here's a ray. There's an infinite number of rays going through here. It's just that we only draw two of them. Well, it turns out that there's one more ray that's good to know how to draw. And that's a ray that comes in through the focal point. A ray that comes in through the focal point. We already drew a ray that went out through the focal point, but let's draw a ray that goes in through the focal point. That would look like this. And let's try to figure out what it's going to look like when it's outgoing. So this is an incoming ray where the incoming ray uh, is going through the focal point. Here's the focal point. The incoming ray went through the focal point. Now we can kind of use symmetry here to figure out how the outgoing ray is going to do because this is going to be the opposite of the P ray. Parallel to the principal axis, yeah. The P ray went out through the focal point and in parallel to the axis. Well, by symmetry, if we go in through the focal point, we should go out parallel to the axis. So this is going to look like this. Okay, and uh, I think in your homework they call this the F ray because it comes in through the focal point. So notice that all these letters do not refer to the outgoing light. All the letters refer to the incoming light. In the P ray, the incoming light comes in parallel to the axis. The M ray comes in to the middle of the device, and the F ray comes in through the focal point. So all of these refer to the incoming light, not what they look like when they're outgoing. OK, so this is a ray we haven't talked about before, but that you're also expected to know the ray that comes in through the focal point, what goes out parallel to the axis. All right, now the interesting thing is, remember, this is the exact shape of light that we decided we needed. The only way to get all the light to come out parallel is for all the light to be parallel to the principal axis. After all, we already know that this ray of light is going to be parallel to the principal axis. The ray that comes in straight to the middle is going to have to go out parallel to the principal axis. The only way to get all the other light rays to be parallel to it is if they're also coming out parallel to the principal axis. So I still have to show you how to get that, but it's still not obvious. But the key point is, this is the kind of light that we want. We'd like to get rays that look like this. We'd like to have rays that go out parallel to the principal axis. That way, because if, if all the rays are parallel to the principal axis, they're all parallel to each other. The question is asking, how can we get all the light rays to be parallel to each other? Well, the way to do that is to get them all parallel to the principal axis. We already know that one ray is always parallel to the principal axis, the one that comes straight through the middle. So the only way to ever, for everything else to be parallel to that is for everything else to be looking like this, too. The question is, if it's a ball going all different directions, how do you get the ball to... Yeah, the question is, um, after all, the light from the bulb is going in all different directions. How do we get all the different rays of light to go through the focal point? Because it seems like only one ray of light is going to go through the focal point, right? So it seems like an insoluble problem. So you put it at, uh, so you put it at the focal point? 
because that forces all the rays to go through the focal point, right? Because they're all already at the focal point. So it's all, almost a little puzzle or game right there. So there is one way that you can force every single ray from a source to, go, to come through the focal point. The only way to do that is to actually put the source right smack dab on the focal point, and then they start there. So let's say that the bulb in this picture If we say that the bulb of this picture is at the focal length distance, well then every single ray that comes from the bulb is an F-ray. Every single bulb that's coming from the ray is an F-ray because an F-ray is, is a ray that's going through the focal point. Well, every single one of these rays is going through the focal point because they start at the focal point. Every single one of them is coming in from the focal point. So you don't have one that just goes Oh, I see, I see. So from wherever they hit, they're going to come out parallel. From wherever they hit the mirror, they're going to come out parallel because they all went through the focal point. They're all F rays. Normally, any other object would only have one F ray. But if the object is actually on the focal point, then all of its rays are coming in through the focal point. So they all go out parallel to the axis. Okay, so um, we learned a bunch of uh, a couple of important things here. First of all, we hadn't even talked about the F-ray before, so you have to have that in your arsenal. Now, the reason we didn't talk about that before is you should never use the F-ray unless it's specifically required by the problem. Remember that for normal ray tracing, it's simpler just to have two rays and just draw the M and the P. Just putting a third ray in there is just going to confuse us. And also, if you're not using a ruler, um, so the F, the P, and the M rays are always going to converge. But if you're not using a ruler, you can't make them converge. You can see these are not going to converge right here. These two are going to hit right here. If I was drawing this with a straight edge, this would also be going through this point. All the outgoing rays have to go through the same point. That's where the image is. But if you're not using a straight edge, your picture is not going to come out neatly like that. My, my picture is not coming out well at all over here. I can kind of, uh, but that's kind of because I didn't get this angle right here. So let's see. I can kind of fix that. Let's make this work. There we go. I was just making this angle too big over here. So now I've gotten all three rays to converge, but it's kind of a pain to get all three rays to converge. Why bother? You only need two rays. So you might as well just stick with the M and the P rays. Those are a little bit easier to draw usually. But if you do draw the F ray, it's supposed to go, it's, it's supposed to converge where all the other rays converge, because the image can only be in one place. Do you know if they're not supposed to converge or if you just drew it wrong? Yeah, that's right. That, because if they're, well, if they're not supposed to converge, that's because you're supposed to use the trace back, yeah. right? Now, that's where the, our chart comes in handy. Because we're always going to know ahead of time whether we're forming a real or a virtual image, right? And if you know ahead of time that you're forming a real image, you know that the outgoing light rays are supposed to converge. And you know, if you know ahead of time that you're forming a virtual image, then you know ahead of time that it's supposed to be the trace backs that converge. So you're right. My pictures don't come out that well either, but with the, with the chart, we know ahead of time. Okay, so we were saying um, normally you don't use the F-ray because the P and the M-ray are good, good enough, but you have to know about it because it might be the focus, no pun intended, of the problem. So we might have to use that over here. Uh, so that's what we did in this case. Also, um, again, I, I, I think a common mistake people make is after they start working with the F-ray, they start thinking that all of the rays are supposed to go through the focal point. And in particular, they start trying to make the M-ray go to the focal point. So remember, the M-ray has nothing to do with the focal point. That's important. Uh, and one more thing, uh, remember that the F-ray comes in through the focal point. The F-ray comes in through the focal point. Well, I notice a lot of people, when they're drawing the F-ray coming into the focal point, they'll say, aha, my ray is coming into the focal point, and here's my outgoing light. That is, they start to, they get confused and think that the lens is over here somehow. They think their job is done. It doesn't just go to the focal point, it goes through the focal point. It doesn't start being parallel until it gets to the lens, yeah. right? All right, so that's an easy mistake to make if, if you're getting confused. All right, so you have to watch out for that too. Uh, that's just one more reason why this is not the best ray to draw unless the problem requires it, because that's a mistake that people can uh, fall into over there. 
All right, and uh, so then to summarize the key ideas, um, remember we already said last time, where is the image when the object is at the focal point? Um, oh, they're not converging. And they're not converging, so we just kind of proved that again. This is a proof of the, yeah, that's good. This is a proof of what we were just talking about. The image is where the outgoing light rays converge, but if the, image, if the rays are truly parallel, they'll never converge. And also, if they're truly parallel, their tracebacks won't converge either. We can't use the tracebacks here because these are actually parallel lines. So this is another way of proving that um, when you put the object at the focal length, the image does, doesn't exist, or the image is at infinity. So if you put the object uh, at the focal point, you don't get an image. What you do get is outgoing parallel rays of light. So if you really want some outgoing parallel rays of light, this is the way to go over here. Uh, this is really the only way to get all the outgoing light rays to be parallel with each other. 